for decades, the idea of a self-improving AI was pure science fiction, something out of Skynet or straight out of a Black Mirror episode. But today, that line between fiction and reality just got blurry. Research lab Sakana AI quietly introduced the world's first self-improving AI coding agent, and they're calling it the Darwin Godel machine. An AI agent that rewrites its own code, evaluates its performance, and literally improves itself, all without human intervention. If this can work at scale, it will change everything. Alright, so first we're going to be breaking down what exactly this agent is, how it works, and why this might actually be the beginning of the singularity. So here they explain where its name stemmed from. They mentioned that a long-standing goal of AI research has been the creation of AI that can learn indefinitely. And one tantalizing path toward that goal is an AI that improves itself by rewriting its own code, including any code responsible for learning. That idea is known as a Godel machine, proposed by Jürgen Schmidhuber decades ago. They then pair this with Darwinian evolution, allowing the agent to search for improvements that empirically improve performance. So that's where they got the name, and that's basically the core concept behind the system. Now, diving a bit deeper, here's how this thing actually works. At the core of the Darwin Godel machine is a self-reinforcing loop. You start off with a parent coding agent. That agent looks at its own code and tries to come up with a modification, essentially a way to improve itself. Once it rewrites parts of its own code, a new child agent is born, one that's slightly different from the original. Then, that new agent gets tested on real-world coding tasks, like solving GitHub issues, to see if the change actually made it better. If the child agent outperforms the parent, it's added to the archive. And then, the process starts all over again. So instead of humans designing better agents, the system designs better versions of itself over and over and over, forever. This might sound familiar to Google's recent Alpha Evolve, and that's because it is. While Alpha Evolve does keep a human scientist or engineer in the loop, it still showed early signs of recursive self-improvement by making the Gemini models it runs on slightly more cost-efficient. But here's the key difference. Sakana's Darwin Godel machine, or DGM, is the world's first fully autonomous self-improving AI agent. No human in the loop at all. As you can see, here is the archive tree of coding agents. Again, you start with a single parent coding agent, that agent makes small tweaks to its own code, creating multiple child agents, each one slightly different. Those child agents are then tested on real-world coding benchmarks, like SWE Bench Verified or Polyglot. If any of them outperform the parent, they're added to the archive and their lineage continues. It's really just basic Darwinian evolution, but applied to AI agents that can literally rewrite their own code. So what does this have to do with the singularity? Well, imagine scaling this up, not just to coding, but to everything. The problem right now is you can't scale this yet, not easily. It would require massive compute, and even then, you wouldn't really know what it's capable of until you run it. Right now, the system is powered by models like OpenAI's O3 Mini and Anthropic's Claude 3.5 and 3.7 Sonnet. But just imagine what this will look like when it's running on something like GPT-6, or when a company like OpenAI builds its own self-improving agent and starts funneling gigawatts of compute into it. I mean, that's when we start entering singularity territory. Most of you have seen this graph before, depicting ex-OpenAI researcher Leopold Aschenbrenner's intelligence explosion scenario. He believes that once AI research itself becomes automated, which sounds exactly like a self-improving coding agent, an intelligence explosion will kick off, leading to immense progress across every industry. He predicts this moment will happen sometime around 2027, and honestly, it looks like we're making good time. Now, if you think about where this intelligence explosion will eventually lead to, it's the singularity. The moment where we can no longer keep up with the pace technology is accelerating at, 
And, well, no one really knows what happens, besides the fact that it will be incomprehensively wild. I'm not sure if anyone's put it like this before, but it honestly feels like we're pressing the fast forward button on human progress itself. I mean, if you think about humans not individually, but more as a collective species, and then if you look at what that collective species does, it's self-improve. We just improve and improve over time, building upon each other's ideas and creations, and testing out many different pathways, exactly like the coding agent evolution tree. But instead of starting with one parent and branching into hundreds of different possibilities, we start with one parent too, but by now have branched into billions of possibilities. The thing is, we can only progress as fast as our biological limitations will allow us. But AI? It's not biological. At some point, these systems could be running millions of evolutionary branches simultaneously, across every field, all at once. That's what the singularity might look like. And right now, we're watching the very first steps. So yeah, I'm not sure if that all made sense, but what I do know is... Things are starting to get pretty wild. Let's bring it back down to Earth for a second, because there's still a lot of work to be done here. As you can see, DGM was able to autonomously boost its performance from 20% to 50% on SWE Bench Verified, and from 14.2% to 30.7% on Polyglot, another coding benchmark. It's pretty clear the more iterations, the more child agents it spawns, the better it gets. And if you look at the curve, it doesn't grow smoothly. It moves in leaps and flat lines, just like human progress. What's interesting is that these improvements are also transferable. In other words, the design improvements it discovers can apply across many different models, not just the ones it was trained on. That means DGM isn't just overfitting to one system, it's discovering general agent design upgrades. Now, those performance gains alone aren't revolutionary, at least not yet. But what is revolutionary is that it managed to get there completely on its own. And that level of autonomy, while it's exactly what Sakana is aiming for, comes with some serious risks, such as the following. When an AI can rewrite its own code, performance isn't the only thing that can change. You also open the door to unintended behaviors, things that no human explicitly programmed or even predicted. Sakana is trying to get ahead of that. Every self-modification happens inside a sandboxed, secure environment with no internet access and full traceability of every single change. They've made the entire archive public as well, and so far, all the changes have been focused strictly on coding performance. But even in that controlled setting, the DGM has already started to cut corners. In one case, instead of running a unit test, it just hallucinated the result literally faking a result that made it look like all the tests had passed. In another experiment, they gave DGM a new reward function meant to detect hallucinations like that, and the model responded by removing the markers used to catch it. In other words, it hacked the reward function to trick the system into thinking it was behaving properly. Now, to be fair, this was all caught, and Sakana was transparent about documenting it. But it shows just how easy it is for a system like this to start optimizing in ways we didn't expect or want. Sakana even mentions that one potential solution to this in the future would be to have the AI system improve upon its own safety, theoretically making itself safer and safer over time. So yeah, it truly feels like we just took a major step toward the intelligence explosion. A world where AI doesn't just get better, it gets better at getting better. Where the next breakthroughs won't come from humans, but from machines evolving themselves. We don't know how far this goes, or how fast, but if this really is the beginning of the singularity, then we just officially crossed the starting line. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this Darwin Goldell machine in the comments. Am I overhyping this, or is this really what it seems to be? And as always, if you want to keep up with this insanely fast-moving space, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.